All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Revolution of One live stream. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We're coming at you live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I have TK's Two Cents, where I talk with you about a couple of tweets, and then I riff on the ideas and stories behind them, or I uh, reply to comments, answer questions, things along those lines. And then on Wednesdays, the Revolution will be live streamed. That is Kamal and I with a special guest talking about what's going on in our world and how to take big ideas and give them practical application in everyday life. I'm excited, by the way, about tomorrow's uh, episode of the live stream. I'm going to have Larry Sharp. Um, for those of you who don't know, Larry Sharp ran for governor, New York, um, the Libertarian Party. Uh, he had a very interesting episode on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's got a lot of fascinating ideas about how to apply voluntarious and free market thinking to a lot of the challenges and complexities that go on in our world. And tomorrow I'm going to have Larry on the show and we're going to talk about a number of things. We're going to talk about voting, the, the, the case to be made for it and against it. Should everybody vote? Does everybody need to vote? Why, why not? Uh, we're also going to take a look at his thoughts on Black Lives Matter. Uh, the arguments for it, the criticism is, is criticisms against it. And where do libertarians stand on issues of social justice and things along those lines? We're going to talk about that as well. So definitely tune in tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time. But for now, we're going to talk about TK's two cents, leveling up and letting go. So uh, let's hit the first tweet and uh, and dive right in. All right. So tweet number one. I'm talking about the difference between fence sitters and creators. Fence sitters ask, how can I be sure what will work? Creators ask, creators say, let's see what works. For fence sitters, answers are a response, uh, action is a response to having all the answers. For creators, answers are a reward for taking action. Fence sitters wait for evidence. Creators conduct experiments. All right. I want to give a shout out to one of the comments here, and uh, and then we'll come back to this tweet. I want to give a shout out to Lindsay Rainey, who uh, comment in, commented and said, I love this. So many people put their faith in the next course, tutorial series, or workshop fixing their current situation. Start doing, not just continuously preparing. All right. So there is a sense in which it ought to be more easy than ever before to believe in the possibility of success in your own life because our world is now proliferated with success stories, success stories of every kind, so much so that no matter what demographic you are in, no matter what kind of community you come from, there's probably a podcast that focuses on the stories of achievers and creators and success, successful people from that background. And so we're no longer in a world where it's easy to dismiss success stories because, oh yeah, well that person lived in a different time period or that person comes from a different kind of background than me. I mean, we've got a lot of success stories, but there's something still missing because a lot of success stories talk about uh, the great achievements, and some of them even talk about the failures along the way, but there's still some aspect of the process that we get wrong because we still deify people who go on to achieve great things as if they were people who acted with certainty and confidence the entire way. And so what that leads to is a lot of people who say, well, wow, I, I, I can dream big and I, I want to accomplish great things, but I don't have any certainty about my ideas. And when I read that person's biography or when I read that person's blog, they sound like they knew for sure what they wanted to do since they were 12 years old and they just followed a linear, clear, well-defined path and never had any doubts along the way. And today I wanna change your thinking about what it takes to be successful because the people who get to do extraordinary things are not people who have some sort of special access to what comes next. The fact of the matter is none of us know what the future holds. None of us gets any guarantees about our ideas and we are all subject to failure. I, I even recently read the story 
of someone who had a restaurant idea and this person was already wealthy and they had the ability to bankroll their own dreams. The restaurant idea was brilliant. They had the perfect partner. They had all the support they needed, the perfect location, opened up the restaurant and for the first six months, they were crushing it. And then a number of things changed in that area that they couldn't possibly predict. Two years later, a strip mall opens up across the street with like 20 restaurants and now their business starts to go under. No one knows the future. No one knows all the variables. So how do we succeed in a world where we can't afford to just sit back and wait on some kind of guarantee that everything's gonna be okay? There's a verse in the Bible that I love. And the verse is one where Jesus says, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and doubt not in your heart, ye shall have what you say. And there's something that he says before that, where he says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. Now, when a lot of people hear that Bible verse, they focus on the part that says, if you have no doubt in your heart, but they don't focus on the fact that he says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. So the idea here is that in order to move mountains, all you need, is mustard size mustard size faith. Oh, okay, TK, well, if you really believe that, let me see you go talk to a mountain and literally move it into the sea. That's how people talk to you when you, when you write stuff like this. That's how people talk to you. Um, but the message here isn't that you can be like, you know, someone who just blinks their eyes and, and, and says, mountain, mountain, um, jump into the ocean and it'll happen in that literal way. But that in order to achieve big things, you don't need to have big beliefs. You can actually create big changes with just small alterations in your thinking. So here's the fundamental difference between the fence sitter and the creator. The fence sitter is someone that says, well, in order to, to do anything, I need to have faith that there's gonna be a positive outcome. I need to have belief beforehand that everything's gonna be all right. And since belief requires evidence, the fence sitter sits around and waits on evidence. And the creator says, I don't need to have a belief that everything's gonna be okay. I don't need to have faith that this is going to work. I just need to have an open mind, the willingness to try something new. Because what is it that the creator knows? The creator knows that there are certain kinds of answers and insights in life that can only come from doing the darn thing, from actually getting out there, putting your ideas out into the world and then getting feedback from the world. Because even if your idea is fantastic, there are still refinements and adjustments that you're gonna have to make when you share that idea with the world. Because the world is gonna experience your idea in a way that's different from you. And that's gonna be a learning experience. That's gonna be a chance for you to be able to create in a different way. So if you wanna do great things, here's my advice. Take the size of that first step you think you need to take and boil it down into something that is so small that it doesn't even require any faith. Because the goal here isn't to believe in the dream. The goal here is to simply try something new, to try something that you haven't had before. Because the goal isn't to get it right. The goal is to discover something that you don't already know. And how do you do that? by doing something that you haven't already done. And instead of pressuring yourself to be some super duper optimistic, high risk taking adventurer, give yourself the permission to say, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm not promising anybody that this is gonna be a successful venture. I'm just gonna conduct a small little experiment and then I'm gonna try it out and then I'm gonna see what's next. And I'll probably be smarter as a result of it. All right, let's go to tweet number two. And before we do, don't forget, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, TK's Two Cents on Tuesdays and uh, Thursdays at 12 p.m. Eastern time, where I take a couple of tweets and share my thoughts about them. And on Wednesdays, the revolution will be live streamed. Wednesday, tomorrow, we've got Larry Sharp joining us. Uh, don't forget to stop in because we're gonna be talking about the case for and against voting, should everybody vote. We're also gonna be talking about things like social justice, Black Lives Matter, policing, and what's the libertarian position on this kind of stuff? And for all of y'all who don't know, 
What is libertarianism even all about? And should we care? We'll be talking about that tomorrow, so tune in. All right, tweet number two. Don't let anyone hold you hostage to a past you've outgrown. Don't let anyone hold you hostage to a past you've outgrown. In life, you have the right and the responsibility to reinvent yourself. You have the permission to evolve beyond who you were in the past. The past might be a part of your story, but it is not the final chapter. It is not the end of the story. No matter who you were yesterday or yesteryear, you can always be more because you can always develop new ideas and new skills and new experiences, right? Well, I got a comment that I want to address. This comment is from Alex. And so when Alex read my tweet that says, never let anyone, or don't let anyone hold you hostage to a past you've outgrown, Alex said, you mean like they do in prisons? Now, you know, I gotta admit, back in the day, comments like this used to frustrate me. And, and they would almost make me not even write what I wanted to say. Because the thing about social media is social media isn't a book. Social media isn't a blog. You only get so much space to share your thoughts. And there is one thing you can be sure of in life. And that is if you say something on social media, there is a lot more that can be said about what you just said than what you just said. You cannot have the final word on social media. You cannot be exhaustive and comprehensive. And so no matter how you try to word it, no matter how you try to structure it, once you hit the enter button and you put that thought out there, there's another angle on it. There, there's a demand for precision that can be made on what you say. And I used to get real psyched out and in my head about this. And there would be so many days where I'd sit down and I'd almost write something. And then I go, no, because I bet somebody's going to say this. And I don't have enough characters to address that and cover all the different perspectives. But now I've come to appreciate these kinds of comments because what they do is they give me the opportunity to see how my thoughts are landing with others, how my words are showing up in the consciousness of other people. And by having that reflected back to me, I can refine my own thinking. I can refine my own way of communicating. And it gives me the opportunity for the people that I teach, for the people that I coach, to be able to make very important conceptual distinctions when wrestling with these kinds of ideas. So Alex, I wanna thank you for this comment because it, it shines a light on some distinctions that are important and that I really do believe are worth talking about. So I just recently watched, my wife and I, we just recently watched this, this documentary. And it was a documentary about someone who went on a 40 year reign of terror. They committed all kinds of crimes and every single one of those crimes went unsolved. No one could figure out who was doing this. And there's a journalist who just got like really obsessed with it and was investigating it, interviewing people. Um, the efforts of that journalist combined with improvements in, in DNA testing technology resulted in this person just recently, like two years ago, getting arrested for all the things that they had done in their past. Now, when they were committing all these crimes, doing all these bad things, they were much younger. And today, this is an older person who was being wheeled into the courtroom. Is this letting the world hold you hostage for a past you've outgrown? My answer to that question is no. And here's the important distinction. When I say don't let the world hold you hostage for a past that you've outgrown, I do not mean that you have an escape clause or an exemption clause from the ever present reality of cause and effect. Actions have consequences. The choices you make produce results. And those results and consequences are something that you are going to have to live with. This isn't about erasing the past. It's about altering what you do going forward in the future. That man who committed all those crimes was not being unnecessarily held hostage by other people's thoughts. This was someone that was paying the price for the consequences of his actions. In every life, we have to take responsibility 
for the choices that we make and the way in which those choices affect others. You know, so if there's some moment in the past and maybe you lost your cool, you lost your temper and you spoke too quickly, you said something to someone and maybe you hurt your their feelings. Maybe you, you made them upset or something along those lines. And that person decided right then and there, I'm never going to forget this moment. I'm never going to forgive you. I'm going to always be bitter at you. You can't change that. You can't control that person's reaction and response. All you can do is own it and own it you should because that is the definition of personal responsibility. And sometimes owning it means going beyond saying, I'm sorry. Sometimes owning it means paying a financial price. Sometimes owning it means giving up your time and your energy or dealing with other kinds of inconveniences. So I am not offering an out to anyone when it comes to the past. We must take responsibilities for the choices that we make. But here's the flip side of that. The flip side of that is even though you can't erase the past, you can disrupt the pattern of thinking and choosing that created those kinds of past results. And you can stop yourself from recreating a future that looks like your past. Just because you're responsible for your past doesn't mean you need to recreate it into the future. One of my favorite lines from the movie Inception is, never recreate from memory, always imagine new spaces. You can do that with your life. If you've made mistakes, if you've messed up, if you've done things you're not a proud that you're not proud of, don't hide from it, don't lie about it, don't pretend like it's not real. Do everything and anything that you can do to take responsibility for that. If you can make it right, make it right. If you can't make it right, own the fact that there may be people that will be mad at you for your life and you've got to deal with those reactions and responses. And cuz I'm a yes and kind of guy, not a yes but kind of guy. And in addition to that, know that your future has a range of possibilities that you get to decide from, and you don't have to determine the possibilities of your future on the basis of past habits. You can break past addictions. You can let go of past habits. You can reinvent your self-image, and you can say, I am the choices that I make from here on out. You know, one of the things I had in mind, because I see I see this happening a lot with people, you know, let's say you're in a relationship and that relationship is toxic and unhealthy and, and, and you choose to get out of that relationship to drag you into discussions about some past relationship that you're not even in anymore because, well, they like gossip or they're curious or they're just interested in it. And you allow yourself to get sucked into conversations that are bringing you down that you don't even want to be a part of. That's allowing other people to hold you hostage to a past that you've outgrown. You have the right to opt out of those conversations. Or let's say that in the past, you were the guy that was always late, or you were the girl that always put her foot in her mouth, or you were the person that always tried things and ended up just embarrassing yourself. Okay, that's your past. And maybe there will always be people who, when they see you, they will say, that's the way I insist on always seeing you. But guess what? None of that stops you from learning something today that you don't already know. None of that stops you from pursuing new kinds of experiences and developing new kinds of skills. You can take that past, you can internalize it as possible wisdom by consulting it for the lessons and insights that it can give you. And then you can say from here on out, I choose to create myself anew. So there are two things, two categories of things in life. One, there are your thoughts and choices. Two, there are other people's reactions and responses. You can't always control number two. You can't always control other people's reactions and responses, but you can always get to be the one who decides what your thoughts and choices are. When I say don't let other people hold you hostage, for a past you've outgrown, I mean, don't let other people's reactions and responses, which you cannot control, limit the possibility of your thoughts and choices, which you can control. Peace out, y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time.